April 2023, we've teamed up with Dessa MTA to release How Will I Make It, a video filmed entirely on Hi8 Tape, now available on our Patreon. How Will I Make It is a look into Dessa's life, being consumed with graffiti from morning till night. Labeled the Million Dollar Vandal by the Daily News, Dessa is one of very few writers to have served time in a maximum security prison over vandalism charges. Aside from legal issues, a lifetime of graffiti has left Dessa with a crippled body. Yet still today, he remains committed to bombing despite the life-changing consequences he's faced. The video features Dessa taking tags on everything from parked motorbikes to walls, daytime and nighttime, sporting an Eddie Bauer backpack filled with paint, only stopping to walk into a deli to re-energize himself. He's been in New York representing MTA for years and documenting graffiti all the while. The video documents Dessa bombing the borough of Brooklyn, a look into photos Dessa has shot on trains and tunnels from a past era, as well as a session of Dessa hitting a sketchbook with various black and silver ink markers. The full video is now available on our Patreon. We're also releasing a limited rerun of Angel and Z Radio Silver Mops. These mops are going to be sent to our Patreon members while supplies last for the month of April 2023. The mops contain silver ink in a two ounce plastic body and are available exclusively through our Patreon. Members also gain access to our video library, featuring videos like Savvy OTR, All We Got Is Us 2, Mike Iraq Virtual Reality, full episodes from Ichabod Why Me, Curve TGE, Dessa MTA, written interviews from Deceive Smart Crew, Cheek, You Won't, and more. As always, immense thank you to everybody who supports the show in any way. We appreciate it more than you know. Enjoy the episode. Peace. Hey, this is Claw Money, and you're listening to Angel and Z, sponsored by Art Primo. What is Art Primo, you ask? How dare you? Art Primo is a graffiti shop that was started by writers for writers in Seattle in 2001, and they have stayed true to their roots for over 20 years. Offering everything from caps to inks to paint to refillable mops. They got nibs, they got jibs, they got caps, solids, zines, books, and more. And their how-to videos and YouTube channel are legendary. Art Primo strives to keep their prices low and quality high, hand-pouring all of their mops and inks in their Seattle warehouse. Shipping orders on the same day, and their site is a source of information for all types of writing tools. Tools for what? Tools for the revolution. Well, like, so the work that I make, it it does kind of document how technology and, and kind of this online commerce is pushing out like retail in the physical space. Um, and, and, you know, I don't know. I mean, I guess I kind of do know why. Cause I like more recently, I've been kind of figuring this out as I kind of like, kind of like whatever reflect on it. But like me, I, I grew up, you know, very rooted in graffiti from like whatever seventh grade, whatever that age is. And like, to me, graffiti was hand in hand with shoplifting. And so, I've been shoplifting since like that age and I think that's where my obsession with the the store and the brick and mortar space comes from because that was where I I like made my money to support my art as a graffiti artist and mm-hmm. and to support my travels and to support friends and to like get me out of a pinch whenever whenever I was in one and it allowed me to live this kind of fast-paced lifestyle and like you know the internet allowed you know whatever the 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 racking to evolve in a young age through ebay and these sorts of things and so i think that was when i really started paying attention to these to like this this kind of narrative and then you know as i as i started making work uh like artwork you know it started out from me um doing kind of sign painting things in the studio while I was helping revoke in, in Detroit. And, uh, the, the aspect of sign painting getting pushed out by graphic design and vinyl plotters. And it was this kind of thing where it was just this, this parallel of like technology pushing out, um, whatever, like craftsmanship and physical, like being out in the world. And now, now the community is, uh, 
it's online. Like, whereas we used to go out into whatever the community or the world and now the world is, is very digital. So it's like, it's definitely like where we're going. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not sure if I even answered yeah, the question. Yeah, no, that, that was, that was good. Uh, just going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how did you start? When did you first start writing graffiti? Uh, like 96 ish. Like, yeah, it was, a, yeah. I remember because I was, I think that was, whenever Tupac died, I remember being in that, in a classroom and, somebody was said something about Tupac dying. And I remember being like drawing, I was having these like little friendly drawing competitions with this kid in that class. And I started painting and, and that. So it was whatever, whatever year that was, but yeah. Yeah. It's, what did, uh, what attracted to you, what attracted you to writing graffiti? What was your first experiences with it? Like who were the people that you connected with? Yeah. So, I mean, I didn't have a lot of people. Well, one was this kid in class and I don't even remember his name or whatever, but he had a graffiti magazine and that kind of opened my eyes. I also like, I lived in central California in a town called Visalia and, uh, but my grandparents lived out in Los Angeles. So I would come out here on like summers and vacations and stuff. And, uh, I would, um, see it on the freeway. And for whatever reason, I was just pulled into, to it. Like I just, I was pretty fascinated by it. It was weird too, cause like my grandfather, he he uh, he migrated here from Ireland, um, and uh, he was super. Just I don't know. We him and I had a really good relationship, and he saw me like fascinated by this thing. So then we would just go drive around, and he would just show me like, hey, I think there's some over here. Let's go over there, and like, and it just kind of like, I don't know. It kind of gave me like, um, I don't know, like the word or whatever it kind of just gave me like support of like pursuing it and Mm -hmm. i just kind of whatever fell in love with it so then you started you started racking i assume through graffiti yeah well i mean it was kind of parallel too like so i had i had i don't even know which one came first because i might have had but yeah i had a friend that um that shoplifted and then i kind of fell into that with him because i grew up like really really poor single mother all that and so I started doing that just to get candy bars or whatever and then as I met writers um there was a few writers in my town and like we would just steal paint and this sort of thing and then I found out all the parallels as I got older to uh from like the parallels between racking and and painting and yeah and I just it just snowballed how long after that I guess you starting to write graffiti getting into racking and doing all that did um did you get down with MSK crew, um, the seventh letter and all the people that you're, that you're associated with? Yeah. So I, I grew up, I grew up wherever this small town and I used to come out here to LA and I would go to art shows. And then I, I eventually like it led me to meeting Eclipse in 2001. And, uh, I don't know. I was offering him like whatever merchandise. I was like, yo, I got these jackets or these things. And, and he was like, yeah, come around, like, just come through, come to my office. And, uh, he had, a he had like an office on six and spring where he was like launching this brand called the seventh letter. And, uh, and instead of him, like even like buying the merchandise that he said he was interested in, he just had me start like, you know, tagging the seventh letter and kind of creating these, like what ended up being like t-shirt designs in, in like 2001. And then shortly thereafter, he, he's like, Hey, we're going to go to Ensenada, Mexico. Do you want to roll? And, and then, and then I was like, yeah, sure. And then I roll and it's like me with like uh saber push eclipse GK, uh, Finn, um, sever. And we went to this random building in Ensenada and all just painted pieces on it and went like partying and shit. And then after that we went to, uh, he invited me to go to scribble jam with them. And yeah, I just kept, I just kept popping back up and hanging out and he would just always keep me busy, like drawing and working on designs and, and kind of teaching me like, uh, you know, illustrator and these things like a little bit like showing me a life outside of like crime, you know, like how to like whatever approach things in a, in a different manner. And that was in 2001. Wow. I, I was just talking to um, I was just talking to someone yesterday, uh, about people within graffiti, 
with the graffiti background and the roots within graffiti who have went on to do things in, you know, fine art mm -hmm. or within like just working for brands or starting up their own companies and shit like that. And I was talking about people like, um, for example, like KR mm -hmm. or like Kunle or, you know, like Jest from A Life and you know the msk crew like which is tons of people who have done that uh and how it really shows people um what's possible you yeah. know what i mean and that's like the biggest thing for me with with um crews like like a crew like msk uh and like someone like you because it's like of course like yeah it's a group of like the illest writers always coming correct whenever you're doing a spot but then like outside of that there's also more and there's also like a farther reach, which I think is really cool. Um, and also like influential worldwide and inspirational to a lot of people who kind of feel like uh, they're wasting their time writing graffiti or they're wasting their time uh, being who they are or anything like that, which is like pretty easy to think. Like I grew up definitely thinking that I'm wasting all of my time and that like this is worth nothing, but like this is what I like to do. This is who I am and like mm -hmm. what the fuck am I supposed to do? You know what I mean? So when there's people like you and people like your you know your crew who are doing shit it gets uh people around the world which i'm sure you realize like ver very pumped and very uh very hyped to just be who they are you know um what was it like i guess like thinking back to the time when you were like i'm assuming primarily racking for a living mm -hmm. what, what was that like uh it was like high highs and low lows you know like you would either be up a ton of money and like you know things would be good because you're you know you could be like fluid with how you spend your time but then there's other times where whatever you catch a case or you know like you you lose out some way and then you gotta like make it back up and then that gets stressful because now you're forced to go and do this thing mm. that's like you know you're putting yourself in the fire to like figure it out so you know, it's, it's, it's like anything, man. It's high highs and low lows. And it was on some full-time, full-time work shit. Yeah. I mean, for me, it was all I ever knew. Like I did that from around seventh grade until about I was 25. And then I had gotten, I'd gotten wrapped up a couple times and I had, because of my priors and like the nature of my, of my crimes, I got popped when I was 25 and, uh, I was facing three years in prison because I was on a felony probation. And so I, I sat in, in jail in, in Fresno County for six months fighting my case. And, uh, yeah, I mean, in, in, in that time, I just had to like start to like realize like, okay, I got to figure something else out because I'm going to get out either on parole or on another felony probation. And I cannot get, wrapped up in this again so I'm basically done and like that was super stressful because it was like coming out and then like basically like you know like clawing my way back to like whatever but it led me to this point where now I'm doing art and and all this stuff but it wasn't easy you know it was it was really difficult it was one of the, you know it was one of the most difficult it was the difficult transition in my life so you you get you get wrapped up and then you're starting to realize, okay, I'm about to stop doing this. Um, where do you go from there? Like, what were the steps you took? What was your mind going through? Well, it, I mean, I, I, it was a lot of just reflecting in jail. And while I was in jail, I saw people in there that none of them wanted to take accountability. And I've always had this kind of perception where whatever happens to me is my fault. Mm. And it's up to me to like go forward. And I can't, I can't go forward looking in the rear view. Like I just have to go forward. And in order to, to, to make it, I had, I just knew that I, I was done and, and then, you know, it put pressure on me to get creative figuring it out, you know, and it was just one day at a time, one step at a time. But luckily I was able to look back and I had, you know, Eclipse who had shown me the potential in like graphic design and, you know, like, leaning into my creativity to try to like make a living and 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 that was what I did and I you know I had these ambitions while I was in jail like it was going to be easy but you know life was uh really honest with me and kind of like 
you know, kicked me to the curb multiple times and it was a, it was a struggle. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get locked up out here? No, it was up north in, in Fresno. Okay. What was that like? Uh, l- luckily I was in a, uh, I was housed in a, in a section of the jail that wasn't like too, too political. I mean, it was political, you know, as like all jail is, but like it wasn't, you know, it was, wasn't too crazy, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I was able to maintain because I, you know, I didn't, I didn't make promises to anybody. I stayed to myself mm-hmm. and like, you know, just, uh, I just did my time. I was able to like, you know, have some people send me some books. I was able to draw, I was able to work out. And I just like, my goal while I was in there was to come out stronger. So I was going to do that by reading, working out and, and drawing mm-hmm. and just kind of reflecting and plotting and that kind of thing. So are you, were you into making art prior to this? No. So you started when you, when you got out? No, not even like I, I might, I did, I've done graffiti, you know, but I don't really necessarily consider that art. It's just graffiti. And then when I got out, I was going to make a living through graphic design. And then, um, you know, as I pursued that, it really kind of like wasn't, it wasn't as, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It was a lot of like taking orders and deadlines and like, you know, everything's, done and finalized but it takes a long time to get paid and like you know you need money and I was accustomed to like fast money and you know and then I I just knew it it wasn't really working but it was kind of all I had and then 2013 I got the opportunity to go to Detroit and assist Revoke and then I saw I got to see the parallels of how this you know individual went from you know being a graffiti artist and I got to see him in the studio and uh that really opened my eyes to like, you know, the work ethic it was going to take and like, you know, like how the, how you had just had to stay focused and, and just make work. And then, yeah, it, it allowed me to start using a paintbrush through doing this sign painting, this faux sign painting stuff I was doing. And then, um, it was after that, that I started making, making art and making paintings. So around 2014, really. that, that's when you started. Yeah. And how did you go about deciding, uh, or I guess feeling out your your style? What was the nature of the subject matter that you were gonna that you were gonna tackle? And um, I guess just arriving to where you are today in terms of how you go about making your work. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So because I was kind of drawn to this this narrative of sign painting getting pushed out by technology, I I did these kind of you know, like this typography based art and I would put, you know, like geometrical patterns behind it and I would use one shot and I, I made paintings like that for a couple of years. And then I don't know though, some, something happened where the, I didn't like the one shot. It was like fucking with my skin Yeah. and I don't like wearing gloves and masks and that. So then I switched over to like an acrylic and then I just, it kind of eventually led me to painting a bit more of like sign structures and retail spaces and brick and mortar buildings and and then you know I was just kind of expanding on that narrative of technology pushing like retail out and and you know just technology in general changing the world and you know and then it snowballed and then I started doing um, more public work and, and murals and stuff like that which is what I wanted to do because one thing that I saw inside of like the like art world was a lot of like you know galleries having their nose up to artists and hoops that artists have to jump through and you can't if you show at this gallery then you can no longer show with that gallery and these sort of like politics Mm -hmm. that I was was and I'm still not into at all like I want to move fluidly and and just kind of have fun in 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 life and so I just started doing murals and I wanted to paint big and and do do that so I went that way so uh, I guess I have a lot to say about what you just said but uh how do you go about um actually what do you think about the pushing out of sign painting and the entrance of uh I guess digital mediums what like graphic design and vinyl and that? yeah just like because art I mean uh sign painting is like a skill Right. And it is an art and it has a lot of rich history and for sure in in so many great people have you know 
taken their hand and done that yeah and for it to just go away not that it's gone because people are still doing it right it's kind of sad in my opinion yeah. like that kind of sucks it's like uh i don't want this thing to go away yeah well yeah i mean and i, I think it i think you're you're dead on and it and it does suck but i think like it's just like anything with technology like it was this huge industry and it was this, you know, profession for a lot of people. And there were schools dedicated to teaching these people. And I think now there's maybe like one school here in Los Angeles, but, um, you know, and it did kind of die, but then it kind of rebirthed as this kind of like craft thing. That's almost like, you know, like you look at like beer, there's like Budweiser and they're like a giant, but if, you know, now, now what sign painting is, is like a craft beer and it's Mm -hmm. just, you know, it's, it's like a niche thing and when you see a business that has an actual hand painted sign it just it looks that much better than somebody with a vinyl sign because you know they're taking that much more pride in their in their business so it, it's i think it's like anything it's a double-edged sword man it's, it's pretty yeah. cool do you think that um technology is changing what we think art is and isn't or what art can be mm-hmm. what with um with like nfts and and just a bunch of stuff coming through uh do you think there's going to be more value placed on those types of things? Yeah, I mean, there there's a ton of value on that stuff. And it's weird because, like, there's been, like, extreme highs in that market. And then uh, extreme low. Did I turn this off or something? No, I... Oh, I hit a button. Let me see. It should be fine. Uh, it's not all good. I'll talk into it. It seems fine to me. Okay. It's still working, so, yeah, it's all good. Yeah, but with <clears throat> with NFTs, there, there's been... um there's already been extreme highs and then like that market has like tanked and right now it's like super like, like kind of dead, but it's, it's interesting to see like what the possibilities are in this short window of time Mm -hmm. that in, in that field. And I don't know, it's, it's like the one thing that's, you can't really argue with is technology always wins. Like you can, you can appreciate like a, blockbuster video but like it's irrelevant you can appreciate a payphone but it's it's irrelevant we all have cell phones now you know like we all have streaming services like technology always seems to win yeah you know like we used to watch uh or we used to listen to the radio then the tv came and then you know it's just constantly evolving yeah um no it's insane you you said in in one uh in one conversation that uh about the iphone Mm -hmm. and about how before we need like paper we need a pen we need a watch we need a computer we need a tv we need a separate household phone Mm -hmm. we need a camera uh and then a video camera and then et cetera et cetera gone forever calculator yeah and now we don't really need because it's all in one thing yeah it's Um, crazy yeah it's pretty crazy and i think about how much time people spend including myself on an iphone uh not that that's like negative or positive but it's insane like you check your you check your screen time hours and it'll be like sometimes for me it'll be like six hours yeah and i'll like do i'll be relatively productive throughout the day and i'm like how was that just six hours yeah you know um and in terms of like the relevance of certain things like sign painting it still exists and like so does something like classical oil painting where you're doing a very realistic uh portrait mm-hmm. even though there's stuff like cameras right e- even though there's stuff like that will just capture it with so much less i guess effort honestly it's going to take you a long time to make a realistic portrait on with using oil on canvas yeah rather than a camera um yeah how does that affect the way that you make art um it kind of well, I mean, I, I lean into technology a lot. Like a lot of my work is, is photo collage on an iPad that then I re illustrate kind of my own way. And, you know, I kind of, my art is pretty modular in the sense that I'll, you know, recreate different signs and, and, and shapes and buildings. And then I'll kind of insert that same building into like 10 different paintings or 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 like five different murals and i can just you know plug and play different things different aspects of them like the top of it this sign is in this mural and then the bottom of that signs in the life water bottle over here and i i kind of just try to keep my work um 
pretty rooted in in that in that aspect where it's it all starts on this tablet leaning into technology and i don't know i i don't know i don't know if i answered the question no yeah it was good uh are, do your roots within graffiti influence the way that you go about your work at all yeah 100 percent. like i'm i'm uh it's why i like painting large-scale murals you know i, I love painting outside i love painting with spray paint um even though i do a lot of like brand collaborations i i don't i don't like i get a lot of requests can you put this in the design can you put this in there or that and i'm and i'm i'm oftentimes if it doesn't fit within my narrative i don't i'll turn down like pretty sizable amounts of money if it just if it if i'm not their guy then i'm not their guy like i do what i do and and that kind of stubbornness a bit comes from graffiti it's like it's like in graffiti it's like i write my name and i do it where i want but in 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 the commercial world for me when i do these like partnerships or murals or whatever like i'm telling the same story different ways across all the work that i do and I stay true to that story no matter what. And yeah, that stubbornness is kind of rooted from my like roots in graffiti. So you just you just won't do something if it's not on your type of time. Yeah, like I've had people ask me to put like hot air balloons in in like murals because the CEO of a company wants a hot air balloon in his office, and I'm like, I'm not your guy. Yeah. And you know, and like they 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 bug out, but I'm. You know, and I've walked away from pretty crazy amounts of money. And that's just one example, but it it happens a lot. But for, for me, like, it's not about, you know, making money. It's to me, it's because I, I love working. I love working with people. And I think like at the end of the day, if I'm painting a mural at an office, my my job is not to the CEO or whatever. It's to the people on the floor of the office. Mm. If I'm designing something for life water it's not for the marketing executives that want to sound creative in a meeting and give me suggestions my my goal is to serve the end consumer who's buying that bottle like because mm. they're the ones paying the company that then pays me you know like they're the ones that to me that i work for so and i'm not i'm doing a disservice to everybody if i just bow down and take money from these companies and jump through all their hoops and i don't know i just have a bigger vision that way yeah i mean with galleries and and with shows and with museums and with you know selling art and and there's a lot of money tied into all of that there's a lot of um there's a lot of money tied into all of that and yeah. i feel that when money gets really tied into something a lot of like genuineness can sometimes disappear and like people will start doing stuff like for the money rather than for than I guess the initial purpose of what they were doing. And yeah. I, uh, is that something that like, what is important to you in life? If you're, if you're like, let's say you're working on a mural and the, the guy who's hiring you, let's say to hire, to do the mural is telling you to do this. And you're like, nah, um, and to me, it says like money is not the most important thing. Uh, I guess what's important to you in life and what are your views on, on money? Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the most important thing to me is, you know, tr staying true to the to the work that I make. That's like number one. And it's it's just kind of li living life on my own terms. Like, you know, like my homie Eclipse says, don't he says, like, don't art direct the art director because you get in these like you get in these like meetings where it's like a lot of times these requests to artists are like, you know, whatever like mar a marketing team will get together take a look at the design that the artist submits and then is like um somebody in the meeting wants to sound important so they're like well what if he put a palm tree right there and it's like they just want to like say something or or like they want to like feel like they contributed to what happened so when they're driving down the highway and they see the mural they could be like tell their spouse like oh that palm tree that was my suggestion you know and it's like which is like kind of silly yeah and it's like just let let the creatives be the creatives like don't don't fucking you know like if you're hiring somebody let them do them and you'll get the best version and what's funny about that is i've worked i've worked for a lot of a lot of like pretty big companies and it's always the biggest ones that like they they, they see a 
I'll submit a design and they're like, we love it. It's like the smaller companies, the more mom and pop ones that are like, well, could you do this? Or can you put my like, my like brand name in there and my, my, my hot air balloon. And it's just like, I don't think I'm your guy, Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, you went from making money from, from, from boosting to working in, in like a graphic design where it's, there's deadlines and not what you thought. Yeah. to doing mural work and then doing like you know your own shows and stuff like that so i feel like a lot of people haven't had that experience in terms of the way that they make money yeah they probably just had one experience maybe which is just like i have a job and this is what yeah. i do not like i've gone it this way i've gone it that way like there's more ways um so what are your views on money yeah i mean it's 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 kind of exactly that like people a lot of people come from like the job world and whoever has the money is the boss whoever pays them the money is the boss but i don't necessarily come from that world and that's kind of one blessing that i was able to take from a you know from a youthful prosperous somewhat life and shoplifting is i don't really view money as real i view i view kind of money as like fuel in the tank to to get me to the next destination in my career like i don't I don't like live outside my means. I try to like live extremely humbly and just kind of like, you know, stay true to the vision. Like the vision is paramount to, to anything. And yeah. So like, yeah, money is, it's just time. It's just, it's, it's gas in the tank. Mm -hmm. That's how I look at it. It's like, it's just a resource. Yeah. I think about that a lot. Um, money is like a resource rather than like, like it is one of like many resources that you kind of need to live in our general yeah. society, but it's not the only one. <clears throat> yeah, but, and, and what's crazy is you you kind of become priceless um, when 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 you find somebody that does what they love. Like you know, like if you genuinely love doing this podcast and you just fucking hammer away at this for years, it's going to become priceless, and somebody's gonna come one day and try to like offer you a ton of money to like get in on that because of the authenticity that you built but it's like what is is it worth it i don't know that's you know that's up to you but yeah yeah. what do you think about speaking about money and shit like what do you think about the fact that as as time's gone on like you know i got into graffiti i don't know what year uh but it's not nearly like not, I was born in 95, you know what I mean? Oh, shit. So it's not like I, um, when you got into graph is like when I was being born. Damn. Um, now I feel old. No, nah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, uh, <laughs> even in my, you know, comparatively and relatively short time compared to people like you, uh, painting and being into graffiti, I've seen and skateboarding. I've been skating my whole life, uh-huh. writing graph my whole life and being into what I'm into. There's like, you know, it's becoming more and more and more mainstream and more accepted. Uh, not that like illegal graph and bombing is accepted. It's just in the terms of like fashion wants a slice, uh, different like companies and streetwear want a slice, uh, that don't really have anything to do with graph yeah. tradition, like uh, originally, right? Not like, not like a company, for example, a skateboarder owned company versus like a Nike. Nothing wrong with Nike, yeah. but like they weren't like any America who's been there since the beginning. Right. Um, their purpose was something else. And that can be positive for the community. And there's not necessarily wrong with that. But what I'm saying is, how do you see that, uh, you know, as all these things start happening and as graffiti evolves and grows and things start changing and it becomes more mainstream? And what do you think about that? Do you think that's a good thing? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think the kind of like repeat philosophy for me is, you know, it is a double edged sword. Like, I don't know. But in this particular case, I, I tend to think it's not as good a thing, you know, like I, I think there's, I think there's definite value in supporting, you know, like uh, America over a Nike because of what, you know, because of that, they have more skin in the game. I mean, Unless it was like a Nike coming and like really giving back to that, you know. Which they do to, do. Right. So then that's kind of good too. Yeah. So it's like, I don't think it's ever really like a one size fits all, you know. Yeah. Like you could have somebody that's rooted in something forever and they could have like, you know, wrong intentions. Whereas then you could get like a Nike that does do a lot of good and, you know. So I, I don't know. It's hard to say. And I, I just think it's definitely not like a one size fits mm-hmm. all. In terms of double edged sword. 
you know, Graf has done a lot of positive stuff for your life, um, seemingly. And but there's also a negative side. Uh, what, do, what do you think some of the negatives are uh, that have come from a life based around and rooted in graffiti culture? Uh, I, don't, I, th- I think a lot of like ego stuff can get really bad. Like, you know, I've, I mean, for me, like I, I coming up, I remember people that had an ego and I, I never wanted to be one of those guys. Like to me, I'm not competing with anybody but myself mm. ever. Like I'm my goal is to get better than I was yesterday. And, and if and, and everybody else to me is 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 better than me. I don't I'm not competing with them like they're on their own individual journey i'm on my individual journey so i think ego shit that can get but that's in anything but i think that could be like a negative inside of inside of it and uh yeah i mean for me i have so many things in life that i'm like interested in at this at this stage of life so it's like 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 the work that i do and that and it's i've kind of evolved just a little bit outside of graffiti and I don't get to paint as much as I would like or as much as I used to. And, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good with it, you know, but it's like, um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, it, it's such a fun thing to do is to paint, to paint graffiti. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. And I don't know. I try to find a lot of like positives inside of the shit I'm doing. Yeah. Cause you said in, in some interview that, uh, you want to make the most use of your time Mm -hmm. and that you feel like there was some sort of lost time in your twenties. Um, I don't know if that's the word you used, but it was something along that idea. Uh, do you still feel that way? Or are you more like satisfied seeing as all that shit did lead to where you are now? Yeah. I mean, and, and for me too, like I, I I know, I kind of know what you're alluding to. And for me, when I was in my twenties, I lived such a like kind of, whatever, I don't know what the word, I mean, it wasn't an easy life, but it was just like, you know, the ability to have access to money kind of led me into like a a real fast paced life, which came with a lot of like partying as well. And, and, um, making some bad decisions in life, uh, you know, the, you know, through partying and stuff like that. And, and then the one thing that shifted was, uh, in 2011, I, I, quit drinking just one day I decided this is it I'm done and uh and I didn't do it like on some um like any I didn't not not to knock like an AA or anything but I did it just kind of for myself like where it was just like I know where that road leads I don't know where this road leads I've wasted a lot of time like drinking it's taken time away from painting and, and kind of achieving anything of substance so let me go down this road and see where it leads and i did it day by day week by week month by month until i got to a year once i got to a year my goal was to kind of look back and be like is is this year more rewarding than what what that life provides and and it was so i just kept it going and that was like 10 11 years ago wow that's yeah. amazing man yeah. uh was it was it difficult uh for you it was but it was just kind of more about figuring out um like that I can't do the same shit anymore like it was weird because I loved going out and socializing uh that I thought like once I quit drinking I I still went out but I'm like I'll get water and then I realized one day because I was just like filled with anxiety while I was out I was like dude I have no fucking business here Mm -hmm. and I just had to fucking leave and then like which was cool because then it I didn't know that was like all I knew, Mm. you know, like, and, uh, I just stopped going out and then like, it's weird. Cause the older I get, the more like of a fucking homebody I am. And like, the more I'm focused on work and yeah, just trying to like get ahead. I mean, the, my best years of, of my life were like my thirties and I'm, I just turned 40 and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make this, this, you know decade the best you know going forward and that's going to take a lot of discipline and you know and that's and i'm looking forward to it i, I actually enjoy getting older yeah, yeah. What, do, what do you have planned in terms of your work or anything really i mean i have right now i have a lot of like short-term plans i've got like projects coming up i'm working on an art show that's going to be out in the desert um and then my plan you know, large scale is to just focus more on studio work. Um, I, I'm trying to expand into a bigger studio. 
um, so that I could just do more that way and trying to be, I'm pretty selective with like the, the work I take on, but I'm trying to be a bit more selective with that. So like, that's kind of it. And also traveling more, like I saw with COVID, like how the world shut down and like, we all kind of got locked into our homes and whatnot. And I, I didn't like that. And now is like the world starting to open back up. I was able to go to Mexico a couple times last year and I really enjoyed that. And like, um, so I want to travel, I want to travel this summer a lot more and just, you know, like while I'm here, work my ass off and then just like when I'm away, like get out and just, you know, focus on traveling, do some painting on the traveling, do some graffiti, that kind of thing. Like that's what I'm looking forward to. That's awesome. Um, yo, thank you so much for speaking on the show. Yeah, man. Um, it was definitely an honor. I've said it before, uh, you and your people are a huge influence and inspiration in my personal life. And I know yeah. I speak for a lot of people saying that. So, yeah. um, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It's, it's an honor on my, my end as well. So thank you. Thank you. Peace.